dear colleagues, uh, dear friends, uh, it's a pleasure for me to uh, uh, welcome today uh, Professor Paolo Gontero, who is uh, Chief of uh, Turin Hospital uh, Urology Department and also the Chairman of the EAU Guidelines for Non-Muscle Invasive Bladder Cancer and Upper Tracheal Carcinoma. Professor Gontero, uh, thank you very much for uh, accepting our invitation here on the Euronco platform. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much for your kind invitation. You have, uh, you have given a really great talk today on uh, non-muscle invasive bladder cancer and the new treatments, especially with uh, IO and immunotherapies. So please, could you tell us uh, what, is your, um, what are new in this, in this field of uh, immunotherapy in non-muscle invasive bladder cancer? Well, uh, uh, as you know, uh, the immune checkpoint inhibitors era has already started uh, since uh, a while, but pembrolizumab is being approved uh, only in uh, USA. So in Europe at the moment, uh, uh, we really don't have this uh, option available uh, for BCG unresponsive, at least. Uh, well, I, I would say that uh, personally I'm not a particular fan of uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors uh, in uh, uh, BCG unresponsive. I mean, the response rate uh, in CS containing patients is, uh, is uh, no more than 40%. The duration is a little bit uh, disappointed and the toxicity is not negligible. I mean, we have 50% uh, grade 3, 4 toxicity mm -hmm. so but I think that uh, the the field of immunotherapy is uh, is promising and uh, we have a very very good option coming up in the pipeline first of all the a combination of uh, immune checkpoint with BCG mm -hmm. and uh, this has been shown in, in a study is uh, it, it, at the moment is only a small series combining BCG with uh, Durvalumab and the response rate was uh, around uh, 70% in uh, CIS containing uh, BCG response which is not uh, too bad. Another uh, drug that uh, uh, of course uh, is uh, is coming up, but again not available in, in Europe, is the Nadofaragen Firadenovec. Uh, this uh, adenovirus, I, I think this is just uh, uh, a breakthrough in the fields of uh, urological treatment, but in the fields of treatment in general, because it's, uh, it's a virus containing the gene of, uh, of the um, interferon, uh, and is administered intravesically, so this will be a, a drug uh, handled by urologist and uh, enters the, the blood cancer cells, uh, integrates the DNA of the interferon and is actually working because they, they show that, that the, the level of interferon is increasing in the urine. There is also apparently uh, an immune uh, change uh, within uh, the, the bladder and the response rate on CIS containing tumor was uh, more than 50%. Duration, uh, again, uh, at one year, 25%. I mean, not dramatic, but the, the toxicity profile of this drug is, uh, is really very good. So this is, uh, this is something that has to be kept in mind. Another combination that I find very interesting is, uh, is the so-called interleukin-15 super agonist combined with, uh, with BCG with no added toxicity uh, compared to BCG alone. And uh, here I think there is a series uh, with a response rate in uh, BCG responsive of 80% which is again not too bad. So I think this probably will be the combination that in the future could actually change our the, the way we manage BCG response because at the moment uh, cystectomy is the first option and honestly conservative treatment uh, uh, so far is being shown very very poor results. We have uh, probably a uh, 25, one out of four that will respond to conservative uh, treatment and their duration is also really, really disappointing.
Yeah, uh, thank you very much for this uh, glimpse into into the the new drugs, and I, I think we we will have a lot of work uh, with you in the EU guidelines in the next coming years to assess how we can introduce them uh, definitely in our in our guidelines. And uh, talking about that, um, we still have absolutely no access in in Europe to these new drugs and new treatments. So uh, my question to you is. Um, there are some, some different views, some different discrepancies between the FDA approval and the EMA. So what is your opinion to, to go, get through that and to, to finally have access to these new drugs? But the, the perception is that uh, the EMA uh, does not uh, accept uh, what the FDA has uh, actually agreed with, uh, with the number of uh, experts of, in the field. Because uh, the fact that uh, BCG responsive that contains CIS uh, can be assessed for efficacy in a single arm trials mm -hmm. just by looking to the response rate. Yeah. Because we know for a long time that the CIS cannot be cured by a TURBT. So if uh, the tumor disappears, it simply means that the drug is, is, uh, is being effective. And uh, it makes absolutely sense to run this type of trials. The reason behind not having a comparator is that actually there is no standard comparator. So how can you ethically uh, do a randomized Hello. study on BCG responsive using as a comparator drugs that are really, really very poor in terms of efficacy? But this concept... Uh, apparently is not accepted by the EMA. So I think that probably if we have to wait uh, for randomized studies on immune checkpoint inhibitors or nadofaragenefir adenovac, we will have to wait years before we can also recruit the patients. Yeah. And, uh, and, and also how to design these kind of trials. So I, I, I think this issue has to be, in my opinion, uh, brought to the discussion with the EMA. Yeah, between all the specialists, uh, the yep. urologists, the oncologists, uh, to the EMEA to discuss how we can get access to it uh, and yeah. to I, change I, their... I, I think we cannot avoid uh, this process yeah. to happen. Great. Thank you very much. And finally, I, I, I would like to have your your opinion. Uh, we have seen a lot of, of new data of new uh, for these new drugs regarding BCG and responsive patients. But don't you think that we should have or we, we need more uh, uh, BCG alternatives up front, like meaning before BCG? Well, I, I, I think what you, you're asking me makes absolutely sense. Uh, we have to keep in mind that, uh, for instance, if we take an high risk non muscle invasive the cancer, we, we know from uh, the, uh, the risk uh, certification, uh, the prognosis is that uh, um, around 10-12% of these patients will progress at five years, will have mm -hmm. progression. And uh, we have honestly little proof, that it's very, very con controversial, whether BCG is affecting the yeah. progression rate. It's affecting the recurrence rate, but not probably the progression rate. So I think uh, high risk uh, is, uh, is an unmet need. Is a, is really, really uh, something where we, we need to challenge BCG. And the same applies to very high-risk uh, patients that refuse the cystectomy because at the moment uh, we have cystectomy as a first-line options and BCG for three years at a full dose uh, as a second-line yeah. options. And the progression rate uh, is 40%. We know from a, a retrospective data that these patients, very high-risk, uh, actually respond to BCG because the, the progression is uh, reduced by 50%, but still they have a 20% uh, uh, risk of uh, progressing, which is far too high. So I think that uh, also the very high risk subgroups uh, uh, needs, if we want to, uh, to attempt to treat these patients conservatively without putting too much at risk uh, their life, uh, we need uh, a uh, new drug. And this might be a combination of BCG because BCG is working in this, uh, in this very high risk groups. 
Yeah, I, I agree with you, and I, I think uh, we also expect some some information. Uh, uh, we discussed previously uh, earlier today uh, with Professor Kamet uh, Jem Dossi in the setting of BCGN response, but that we also see that there are new studies that are also challenging BCG upfront, and I. I, I completely share your thoughts and think that uh, we, we will have uh, to, to move forward and to challenge BCG more and more in high risk and very high risk patients to, to reduce uh, and to, con to have a conservative treatment. Absolutely. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Contero, for your time and for this well, a good thoughts. And uh, I hope that you will have a good Congress. Thank you very much. Uh, I wish the same uh, to you. And thank you very much again for uh, invitation. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.